Like the reigning champion Milwaukee Bucks, the Atlanta Hawks started slow, but have quickly picked themselves back up and established themselves as top contenders to get back to the finals. Led by Captain Cold Trey Young, a versatile beast up front in John Collins, to go along with killer Cam Reddish, and of course, the Red Velvet Kevin Herter, here's a breakdown of how the Hawks have won eight of their last nine games, and why Atlanta's still a problem after coming up two wins short of competing for the Larry O'Brien Trophy last summer. Stay tuned to see my early prediction for the 2022 Atlanta Hawks. Before continuing, only 15.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so hit the sub box to stay tuned for basketball analysis every day if you haven't already. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes just a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Fans in the ATL got to witness one hell of a playoff run from their young squad in 2021, as miraculously and at the time 22-year-old Trey Young led the Hawks not only into the Eastern Conference Finals, but two wins from playing the Phoenix Suns in the NBA Finals. You would have thought Atlanta would have carried that momentum over from the postseason into 2021-22. But oddly, Atlanta went back to looking like the team that won 20-ish games a season from 2017 to 2020, as they won just four of their first 13 outings. But after a win to the team that took them out in the East Finals to improve to 5-9, the Hawks turned around their early season woes. Last spring, throughout a blistering run through the New York Knicks in the quarterfinals and the Philadelphia 76ers in round two, Trey Young had to sit out a few games in the East Finals and the Hawks came up short to a Milwaukee Bucks team that just had better producing top-heavy firepower. However, in his first of likely many playoff runs to come throughout an expectedly long Hall of Fame-esque career for Ice Trey, he performed like one of the NBA's top talents. After posting ridiculous averages of 29 points and 10 assists over 16 playoff games, the 23-year-old killer is coming for more in 2022. It was announced this past Monday that the Hawks' face of the franchise, Trey Young, won Eastern Conference Player of the Week. Young averaged 31.3 points and 8.5 assists as the Hawks went 3-1 in four games from the 22nd to the 28th of November. Young shot 56.3% from the fields and 51.7% from three during that four-game stretch, and he scored 30 or more points in each game. Fueling the Hawks to a recent surge after starting 4-9 on the season, Atlanta's gone a blistering 8-1 since then, and that has everything to do with Ice Tray. His efficiency in the recent award-winning week signified the type of top-notch floor general we've all been witnessing in 2021-22. Trey has been shooting a career high by far from both the fields and from three-point range. So much for the narrative that the elimination of flopping for fouls would decrease his value. Young had consecutive 30-plus point 10 assist outings on November 24th and November 26th, becoming the only player in the NBA this season to notch back-to-back -back 30 or more point, 10 or more assist games. Also, his 31 point, 10 assist line on November 26th against Memphis came in only three quarters of play. The fourth year guard is off to a mind-boggling start this season and is well on his way to his second career All-Star appearance. Young is the only player in the NBA this season to be averaging at least 25 points and 9 assists, as he ranks top 5 in each category. The Atlanta Hawks' wing depth in the absence of DeAndre Hunter, as well as Bogdan Bogdanovich, is going to be crucial. Hunter's going to miss two months, while Bogey is expected to be out until Christmas. Depth is one of the most important facets to having a successful team. Of course, you need one or three stars to carry the scoring load, intimidate your opponents, and set the mantra of the team, but what if one of those top guys goes down with an injury? You need the adequate insurance around your flashy top players, or ultimately your winning won't hold up. Hunter's going to miss the next eight weeks of the season after suffering a wrist injury and is being forced to have surgery on that wrist. Hunter's absence from the team is all too familiar since he missed most of last year due to a knee injury. Hunter returned at the end of the year and played into the first round of the playoffs. But after that first round series versus New York, he was ruled out for the rest of the postseason with a torn right meniscus. Maybe they brought him back a bit too soon. But now he's out again with a significant injury on the other side of his body. Luckily for Hawks fans, they have options behind DeAndre that can fill in for him while he's out. Kevin Herter stepped in for Hunter while he was out last year and produced fairly well. For a player that's had injury issues himself in the past as well, Herter showed off his durability in 2021. He played all 75 games last year, 
and started in 59 of them. Herter displayed progression in his game throughout the year, becoming a better facilitator while also improving his defense as, at times, he guards the opposing team's best player. When DeAndre Hunter initially returned this year, Herter moved back to the second unit, and that hurt his efficiency shooting the ball to start the year. But in his first five games as a starter, filling in for Hunter, Red Velvet shot a steaming 60% from both the fields and from deep range. As John Collins would say, it's getting red velvety up in here, as Kevin's starting to live up to his recently signed four-year, $65 million contract extension. Herter's ability to manufacture offense for himself has greatly spaced out the floor for Atlanta, especially with the starting unit. Coach Nate McMillan, who turned around this team's culture after being hired, emphasizes getting shots in the paint, and Kevin has developed a consistent push shot that allows him to get an easy two points at will. On this play, the Bucks are in a zone, but once Herter realizes there's an opening, he attacks. With Giannis on Clint Capella and Jordan Noira focused on Collins, that gives Herter an easy shot. Herter isn't just capable of creating for himself, but what's really developed in his game is how he can create for others on the court as well. We know Trey Young operates the pace of the offensive flow, but having more than one playmaker on the court at the same time, allows for more ball movement and better shots. With injuries across the board on the wing to Bogdan Bogdanovich, Cam Reddish, and the aforementioned DeAndre Hunter all out of the lineup, Timothy Luwabu Cabarro earned the starting nod for the Hawks in their win against Indiana. TLC finished with 8 points on 3 for 6 shooting and a block, displaying that he's a valuable bit of insurance on the perimeter for this Hawks team. With Timothy on the floor in the first quarter, Atlanta shot 64% from the fields, and they were 7 of 8 from 3. Luwabu Cabarro is a 6 foot 7 wing with a wingspan that ranges over 7 feet, and as his career has progressed, he's become increasingly consistent from 3 point range. For those two qualities, his length and shooting, TLC lasted 5 years in the league prior to this season in Atlanta. Hawks GM Travis Schlank picked up TLC on September the 22nd, and that's a signing which is paying off significantly. On November 24th against San Antonio, on defense, Clint Capella locked down the perimeter to the paint, he crashed the boards like the top rebounder he is, and got a pair of steals as well. Capella set a career high for steals in a single game, as the center had 5. Capella had 11 rebounds, 5 steals, and 3 blocks, becoming only the 4th Hawk to tally 10 plus rebounds, 5 plus steals, and 3 plus blocks in a single game. Double C is that crucial paint protector any team would love to have, including the Houston Rockets, who dumped him to play small ball in 2020 and immediately regretted it. In four straight seasons now, the Hawks and formerly the Rockets' traditional center has been at least top five among all players in rebounds per game. In 21-22, Capella's third in boards, eighth in blocks, and 18th in player efficiency rating, He's a tremendously valuable five-man, despite being non-traditional for the current small ball era. A little bit more traditional is the overwhelming slashing stretch four in John Collins, who's capable of both rising up for posters after catching lobs or passes in the pick and roll, and also popping out to the three-point line and knocking down distance daggers. The supreme versatility that Collins brings to the table makes him a nightmare for opposing power forwards to check. Collins is number 12 among all players in both blocks per game and field goal efficiency, and he ranks number 5 among all power forwards in 3 point percentage. Before he got hurt on November 27th, the third year man from Duke and Cam Reddish was making solid progression. He came off the disabled list just in time for the conference finals last spring, and Cam posted incredible numbers. In 21-22, Reddish is setting a career high in efficiency, and he's also 17th league-wide in free throw percentage. When all their pieces get healthy, led by Captain Cold, Atlanta's going to be damn tough to take down four times out of seven in the 2022 playoffs. But as you can see, even for the time being, ATL's basketball club is still a force to be reckoned with. For next video shoutout, what's the most dangerous part about the Atlanta Hawks? The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's shoutout goes to TJ Views, who says Masai Ujiri should trade Pascal Siakam to a contending team where he can play to his strengths 
as he did in the 2019 Raptors championship run, where he can be a second or third option. TJ, I definitely agree, Siakam needs a change of scenery and can contribute in a different role. Hope all of you watching have a great one. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.